Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kate and I work in Wetu's onboarding team. So what we are going to do today, the first thing we'll go look at is our objectives for this session. And then our second thing we're going to discuss is why build routes. Then we'll look at the most frequently used modes of transport. And then we'll have a look at the system and do a little bit of a show and tell. And then after that, we'll have our questions and answers section. So our objectives, by the end of today's webinars, you will be able to load transfers and add accurate transfer details, customize routes for self-drive, and then also add scheduled flights and use our flight lookup functionality. Why build routes? So a lot of people prefer just to leave the routes as they fall default, but the reason that we build routes is to break the journey up into the sections. So the smaller you can go, we can load as many different sections as you want. And then it also allows you to indicate the mode of transport for each section. Instead of everything just looking the same, you can specify how they will be traveling in certain times. We can also indicate the exact routes that they will be traveling so we can customize the route and then we can also add references and contact information for each leg of the trip that will pull through then into their final documents and their vouchers that will go through to them so some of our most frequently used modes of transport we find that transfers and self-drives and scheduled flights are the most common ones that people use and then we also have boats and our no route options. So those are the ones that people use most often. And we will kind of touch on those today. The boats we'll look as a day perspective. We have done a webinar previously on using boats as accommodations. And that is available for you on our YouTube channel to go and watch that. So let's have a look and see at the system. So what I have done, pre-created an itinerary and in my itinerary, I have put in an overnight flight, accommodation in Cape Town and then an accommodation in Johannesburg. So before you can build your route, you have to have the places where they're going. And then once the accommodations are in, you can move on to the next step, which is our route builder. So because I've added in an overnight travel, what you will see in the beginning is day one and it the gray block won't have anything in it and that's because the overnight travel hasn't been loaded so if i scroll down a little bit you'll see day one to two which is overnight and this is the section where the flight of the transport where the date actually changes so this would be if they were flying or in a transfer or something along those lines so what i'm going to do here i'm going to use a flight from Dubai so I search for the airport by putting in the airport code and then I'll fly the clients to Cape Town so again when searching for an airport it's always easiest to put in the airport code it will come straight up so once I've added in my start and end locations of my overnight flight you can see that day one the international airport has filled in so this start location would be how the they are getting to that airport but a lot of the times in the beginning of an itinerary they're coming from their homes and you wouldn't put their home in the start point what you can do is if they're coming from a hotel or something along those lines you would be able to put the hotel's name in there but we're not able to load specific addresses so we can just leave it blank so once i've loaded in my locations I could drop down on my mode of transfer and you'll see the various different options we have available so what I'm going to do for this one is choose a scheduled flight and you'll see that the flight has now pulled through as a red line onto my itinerary if I click on my airplane you'll see that I'm able to load details for that flight for the client so once they have arrived in Cape Town, what I will do is drive, do a transfer. So again, drop down and choose transfer. And if I zoom in, you'll see my transfer route has shown there on the itinerary. 
The icon by default is a little bus for our transfer. And if I click on this, I am able to select a different icon. So depending on which icon I would like, you can hover over it to get a little bit more information. And then after I've chosen my icon, I can put in my information. So for the company details, if you have pre-saved any contact information in your admin tab, we can click on load contacts and you'll be able to choose a contact from your admin tab. I haven't loaded any in this account. So what I can do is put the name of the transfer company. And then I can also drop down and choose what type of transfer it is. So if this is a private transfer or shuttle, I can specify whichever one. So if I want to go as far as putting in the vehicle type, I could say that they are getting picked up in a limo and the reference number from the transfer company we can say is limo one. I can go as far to put up pickup and drop off places as well as times and then a contact number and an alternative contact number for the company. So if I save those details, they will be uploaded and you can see my icon has changed to a little car. So now on day four, my clients are going from Elliman House to the residence in Johannesburg. So as you can see, this little blue line, that's quite a long drive. So what we would prefer to do is fly our clients there. So if I add on this little blue icon on the left hand side and I click over there, what I do is I add a leg. And if I start going through here, I can build my trip. So I will take transfer to Cape Town Airport, add another mode, drop down and choose a scheduled flight and they will fly to Johannesburg Airport. So once they're in Johannesburg Airport, they'll pick up a car and they will drive to the hotel. So if I want to put in details, I can click on the car, put in my details for my transfer. And if I look at my flight, I can click on my airplane. So what we have when we load our flight details is something called our flight lookup. So if I choose a SAF Air flight and the flight is 100 and I click to add flight details, it's not finding them. Let me just save that. Let's see if I can choose the right dates. We are having a little bit of issues getting the right dates because some of the airlines have just closed. <laughs> so let's try this one again. It's not working. So if we've got the correct dates and all of the correct information, it would pull through the terminal numbers, the flight times, the duration of the flight and the contact information for the flight company. And that would pull through automatically into the system. Okay, so I can save those details. As they didn't pull through anything here, I can still manually fill in the information if I have it. So I can just say it's departing at eight o'clock and we'll say that it's arriving at 10. Flight duration, this is all just estimates and we can put in a contact number and save that. So when it comes to self-drives, if I click on my little icon, I can again change my icon. So if I wanted, they were driving a motorcycle, I can put the motorcycle in and save those details. You'll see when I have a direct self-drive section, there is a little blue tick that says directions and that just shows that directions are available for that leg. At the end, we'll go from the hotel and we will self-drive them back to the airport and just change that again to our little bit of bike. So when we have got self-drives loaded within our system, we have a little button that appears at the bottom with the word directions. If I click on the directions, you'll see the list of directions available for the 
trip. So these are all of the self-drive routes that are in the system. And if I click on my little pencil, I'll be able to see the routing that is available in the system. So down the right hand side is directions and those are pulling through from Google. So if I hover over my little blue line, I can click and hold and drag my blue line. And what I'm able to do is redirect the routing for that client. So these can be saved within your system as well. So you would just click update directions and it would prompt you to use a name. And then you can see that the directions are updating as I am moving the line. So at the bottom over here, you can see that the directions are supplied by Google, which will come through but you are able to also edit all of these sections in here. So if you wanted to put in any specific information for your clients, you would be able to edit the details. So by updating directions and saving it, you would be available in your account in the future. And by clicking on full directions, you would get the drop down when there are options available. What we can also do is add our car hire and here again from our admin section we can choose the car hire company details that we would like to use or we can type them in. And our reference. We can also put in our pickup and drop off places and our car hire dates. So the car hire dates are sometimes different depending on the 24 hour period that you've hired them within. And that is why you have the option to specify the dates individually. So where we are able to edit the routes and the directions of the self drive routes, we are also able to edit the transfer routes. So where we have our transfers available for our clients, if we click on our little icon that is on our map, you're still able to click and drag the routing and edit the routing on the map. On the right, you'll see that you're no longer able to edit the directions. And this is because as it's a transfer, it will not be available for your clients afterwards. So I'm getting some comments through saying that I've got the times wrong and the flight number wrong. It's the one that my colleague created in my script. So I think I just got the wrong one, but it's fine. I'll <laughs> show you how to do it. We'll see. Let's see if we can get it correct. So from Cape Town to Joburg, let me just search for a flight. Not finding correct flights at the moment. So what you do, you just put the name in and the number and you'll get the flight details when it comes through. So once we have all of the information loaded in the route builder, we move on to our planner stage. And what some people don't always know about is that in our planner stage, we can build a route as well. So what I'm going to do is while we're in Cape Town, just add an activity. and at our waterfront. So those are the ones that I have put in. And when I've got my activities loaded on the right hand side, there is an add day route option. So automatically it opens up a screen where it has got my start and end location as the accommodation that they're staying at. And what I can do is drop down and choose my activities in the order that it comes in. So when we look at this, we have it as a self-drive function, which they are being transferred in Cape Town. So we'll choose transfers. But then what we do have is Robin Island. So we can't exactly drive to Robin Island. As you can see, there's no line that is going through there. So what we need to do is add, and the same way we can add legs in the root builder, we can click to add a leg. And if I click over here, I can say Robin Island Ferry and I can add another section 
saying Robin Island Ferry. So I have the ferry and from the ferry to the island they will take a boat. So I have the option to either add boat or boat no route and this boat no route will just put a straight line between the point. So this is quite useful if we don't know the exact route that the boat will be taking and we just want the point to be indicated there. And if I drop down over here from Robin Island Ferry they can walk across to the VNA waterfront. So I will say self drive and I will choose you can take them cycling. So then they can cycle over to the waterfront. So as I've gone through this I've built my route and the same way that I was able to put in information I can fill in the details as I go in route builder. So if I save that that will then display in my itinerary. So those transfers will then display in the itinerary for the clients to see and if they were to self-drive they would have been able to use the self-drive as well. I have gone over everything on the route builder. I see I have a lot of questions coming through so this is just to help you if you do want to share some more questions. At the bottom of your screen there'll be a chat and a question and answer so keep those questions coming in. I'm just going to take two seconds to look over them and then I'll come back with the answers for you. So I've had someone question what about the flights if you load them months before and you can get schedule changes. Let's say the plane departs at a different time. Will the system update this from Amadeus? So from my understanding the system needs to you need to re-pull it from the system and that will update it. So you would go in and put the, the flight details and just click get flight details again. I will however check on this. Not a hundred percent on that response because I know when there are different details it does pull up notifications so let me just check if it will pull through but from my understanding of the system you will more than likely have to go in and just refresh the itinerary. So how can I add car rental company in my admin tab? So if we look in our dashboard and we click on the admin section it will load your details and there will be a section called contacts and services. So under this contacts and services you can create a contact and under here you can say car hire company, our contact number, we can do our phone numbers and another phone number and an email address. So once we save that all of those contact informations will be saved in our admin section. So if I go back it will be in my list and then if I go into my itineraries under root builder if I edit my car hire and I can then choose that contact that I loaded. So those contact inf that contact information will be available whether you are loading a transfer that will also be available to choose and you'll be able to select that from that list as you go through. So it's just a way of keeping all of the contact numbers in place so that you don't have to type them each time. My next question, so the flights that you're loading, would they show booked by us or could we add them just for interest sake? So we don't specify on our specific services which are booked by us, especially with the flights and the transfers. But what I would do if you wanted to put in flights that they have booked, I could put in exclude and I can say all flights are added as booked by the client. So you could put something in the excludes or in the pricing section just to make sure that they know that those flights are not included and then it would you would just still be able to put in the information for them. 
it's also nice for them to have the information in their documents. So just as, as long as you specify in the excludes or, or terms and conditions or something that the, they know that it's not included in the price. So another question just popped up, what's the special interest for? So the special interest is just a little word. So if you have a special interest for the tour, you can put in just free type the words and they show on the overview of the itinerary just for information for the clients. There is a question saying why when the flight is confirmed and doesn't pull through on the route builder, but Google is advised that it is a confirmed flight. So a lot of the time with our route builder, with our uh, flight lookup, when you look at the names and we add the airlines, sometimes what it is is that you book it as a South African flight, but then, for example, maybe SAF is actually the ground handler for the, the flight. So sometimes there is a bit of confusion that way. And also if the dates are incorrect, it sometimes pulls through. I noticed lately that I have been having quite a bit of issues with, I think, because of the travel bans at the moment that sometimes I'm not able to find flights through this but what we are doing is we're pulling from a live system that has all of the information so if you're not able to find the flight like I wasn't earlier you can always see if it is operated by a different company and then sometimes you would just have to choose that name rather than the company that that displays I hope that answers the question that is what we have found from our side so most of the time it does show up. I have just been having a bit of difficulties lately. Sometimes when I put flight details in the departure time and the arrival on the following date, the system does not show the other date. Someone has said she's put in flight details for the departure time and arrival on the following date and the system doesn't show the other date. So just want to check on that, on where you're referring to the, the difference. I know on the itinerary builder, if I look for example at my overnight flight, it doesn't have the, the depart, the landing date, but it has got a little plus one. So if that is what you're referring to, this is where transport, It has got the plus one over there, which indicates that it will be landing in a day advance. So it's got the departure date. And then for this one example, it is departing and landing on the same day. So it does not have the plus one. We have a question about trains being loaded in to the system. So uh, this is good news because we also have a full webinar on trains coming up later this month. So we are able to add trains in the itinerary builder. So if I open this up, we can do this one. So if they were going from Cape Town to Joburg via train, it would have to be not like an overnight train. If they were sleeping on the train, for example, then we would load it as an accommodation. But if it is just normal train between two locations, what we would do is we would add in our station. And we would be able to add in our Johannesburg. Not sure if that railway station has a different name. to a different example. Okay, if I go over to the planner and if I go into Cape Town, we could have them go over to Boulder's Beach. And in my day route, we can add in Boulder's Beach and we can choose to add another location and this would be Cape Town Railway. It's really not working with me. <laughs> okay, so we'll take them from Cape Town. We can drop down and take them by train. And that would be to Simons Town. 
station. It's really not working with me. So if we choose train, there's a list of train routes that are available. So these are ones that have been preloaded in our system, but you would, it would depend on if yours is loaded or not. We do also have the option to do custom routes. And if I do custom routes, you can see a straight line between point A and B. And what you're able to do is either leave it as a straight line, or if you have got some time, you can build a route along the railway track. So what we do normally suggest is that when you are building along a, a track and you actually want to build a route, that you build it in as a component and that component you would then be able to use in multiple itineraries in the future. So to build a component, so if we add that in and then you'll see that it will have the link over that. So if you're wanting to build a complicated route in your itinerary builder, we do recommend you build complicated routes as components. Um, so either day components or multi-day component, depending on if it's got accommodation in the section and that you will be able to just use in your itineraries when you have booked them. So we do have a new functionality with regards to our train routes that allows you to add in the routes that are on Google. So if there are Google routes available, there will be a button option that allows you to add in that route straight from Google. So I think it is not next week, the week after, we are going to be doing a whole webinar on that topic of pulling in train routes. And I would be a little bit more prepared with a whole lot of examples for you when we do things like that. I, it's always useful for me to have specific examples and departure points and things like that to investigate so that I can, I know what to show you and where to get the correct result. So we will be doing that, I think in a few weeks time, and we'll be able to go over the specific train routes for you. So sorry, I don't have, I've showed you how to load a train. It works um, in the day route as the same as in the route builder. You would just drop down and choose a train and then you would be able to build your route or you can choose train and no route and then it will just have a straight line. So no other questions are coming through. So thank you very much for to everyone for joining.